food security is more than just having a stocked pantry. It is about ensuring that your household is equipped to face emergencies, disruptions, or shortages with resilience and confidence. We could all use a little more confidence, couldn't we? Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sutton's Days. If you're new here, my name is Lisa, and we are all about pantry preparedness. Today, we are going to work up a checklist for you. It's an emergency essential checklist for your food security, because if you've ever been food insecure, you know. First thing on the list to do, okay, is we're going to assess what you have in stock already, whether it's a little bit or whether it's a lot or whether you just genuinely don't have any idea. Before making any purchases at all, you need to assess what is in your pantry already, in your freezer and your other storage areas. This helps you prevent overbuying uh, the wrong things, okay, and identifies gaps in your food security. They're easy to find, and sometimes all you have to do is go through one little emergency and you go, why didn't I think about having that, you know? So, assessing what you've got, otherwise known as inventory. The next thing to do is something that some of you are not going to like, but you know, it's how you discover the holes. It's how you plan, okay? Create a 30-day emergency meal plan. If something happens and you cannot go to work for a month, you cannot go anywhere for a month, you, you know, the world just whatever for a month, okay? Then figure out a 30-day meal plan. Don't go buy those stupid buckets. Those buckets are stupid. They are carb-laden, sodium-laden garbage, and they will make you feel crappy instead of good, okay? You want real food. You want real honest-to-goodness food. But planning meals around what you have and what you need to stock ensures that you're buying food, okay, that you will actually eat. Because if you're not going to actually eat it, you might as well save yourself some time and light the dollar bills on fire. Seriously. Include breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks to avoid food fatigue. If you've never had food fatigue, it's a thing. And you want to make sure that you're getting all of your nutrients in there, okay? Number three, diversify your food storage. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, okay? So store a mix of canned, dried, frozen, shelf-stable foods, whether they're freeze-dried, whether they're commercially canned, whether they're home canned, whether it's a mixture of all the both, dehydrated. Do your do, folks, okay? But mix it up a little bit as you can. Uh, this diversity provides flexibility in meals uh, and ensures that you have a variety of foods that cater to different needs and different tastes. Not everybody is a fan of ugly chicken. It's wrong. I know, but not everybody is. So find other ways to have the same thing, okay? It's possible. Number four is to focus on nutrient-dense foods. Stay away from the Twinkies. I don't, I, uh, what else do you want me to tell you, okay? Stock up on foods rich in protein, healthy fats, complex carbs, such as canned meats, nut butters, if you're not allergic, okay? Whole grains, shelf-stable vegetables. Uh, this ensures that you maintain your energy levels and you're healthy during an emergency because, like I said, those buckets of food are garbage. You're going to have to do some prioritizing, okay? So prioritize shelf-stable proteins. You know me. I love putting protein on my shelves. My favorite thing in the whole world to do. Include canned meats like chicken, tuna, salmon, freeze-dried proteins, uh, other long-lasting options like powdered eggs or uh, protein powders. I love me some protein powder, okay? These items are critical because protein supports muscle maintenance and overall health, which is why I have a kitten that's going crazy at my feet, which is why um, we focus so heavy on protein, different different ways of eating, because especially as we get older, we need to maintain that muscle health and protein. That's the way to do it, my friends. And unfortunately, protein is pricey. Okay, we talked about it before. Store plenty of water or water purification methods, okay? Uh, you know, no less than a gallon a day per person per animal. Obviously, if it's a cat, then two gallons or, or you know, two cats, one gallon, you know, whatever you got to do. Um, you also, number seven, want to include quick and easy meals. Everybody doesn't feel like a four course meal. And I tell you what, most emergencies, the last thing you're thinking about is some kind of elaborate, let's have chicken tetrazzini tonight. No, let's just have a sandwich. Okay. Let's be realistic people. So figure out some quick, easy meals that you can throw together if there is some kind of emergency out of your pantry. It's the easiest way to do anything. Look at, I can grab a can of tuna and a can of cream of mushroom soup and some pasta and I've got dinner. 
No, you won't find it at a five-star restaurant, but you will find it at Sutton's at least once a winter, okay? And we've got it in the pantry. You want to make sure to add comfort foods like treats. This is number eight. So um, chocolate chips literally almost never go bad, okay? Even if they get the white stuff on the outside, that's called bloom. It, it's normal. It means your chocolate is real chocolate. Um, comfort foods. So find your comfort foods. But uh, as less as little processed as possible, if you can make it yourself, it's all the better. Honest to goodness, peanut butter is a comfort food for me. Um, rotate your stock regularly. Like I said, do not stock it if you don't eat it today. If you do, you might as well just save yourself some time and trouble. Go to the beach, light your dollar bills on fire. Because if you are just stocking it for the sake of stocking it, you are literally wasting money. Rotate this food through. I get emails pretty much daily saying, do you really eat Thrive Life Foods? Yeah. Like every single day in one way or another, I use Thrive Life Foods. Whether it's tossed in with my oatmeal, whether it's tossed in with some yogurt, whether it's a cup of broth with some chicken or some vegetables or, you know, onions and celery and carrots. Yes, literally every single day I use it. So if you don't use it, don't stock it. You're taking up good space and you're wasting good money. Try to invest. I know it's hard. It's not possible for everyone. Um, in some long-term uh, food storage options, Okay. First, you know, some of our forever foods are really pretty inexpensive. If you want to take a look at those, I'll have a link at the end of the video to 24 forever foods. Um, Freeze-dried food is another option. Some dehydrated food is another option, depending on the company and how they store it for you. So if you can, look at some long-term term options. Number 11 is to ensure adequate storage conditions, okay? It's hard to do, and I get it, but there's all kinds of different ways to store your food, literally. You can put it under beds, over doors, you name it. If you want to see some more ideas on how to do that, you can sign up for my newsletter. Yeah, I have a newsletter, believe it or not. Yeah, it comes out twice a week for the most part, and the one coming up on Wednesday is all about uh, ways to store your food. Yeah, you might like it. Check it out. Suttonsdays.com. Sign up for the newsletter there. They'll send you an email to confirm that you really want to do it. Get that confirmation email and then you'll start receiving them. Easy peasy. Let's get back to the list. Number 12 is to consider special dietary needs. Okay. So if they're allergic to peanut butter, don't turn, don't stock peanut butters, right? Makes sense. Um, number 13, stock seasonings and cooking essentials. I have an entire rack here. Let me flip you. I have an entire rack here seasonings, spices, um, extracts. Yeah. You name it. It's all here. Okay. These are just as important as everything else, because this is going to make that same old chicken or that same old beef taste a little bit better. And those beans and that rice. Number 14, manual can opener, my friends. Yes. Okay. Number 15, include multivitamins and supplements. Seriously do it. Uh, number 16, keep a stock of preserved foods uh, dehydrated, fermented, and jars. So incorporate some home preserved foods if you're a home preserver. I think this is an integral, if not the basis for my pantry. So you definitely want to keep some of those if that's something that you do because it makes life a little bit easier. Okay. Include pickles, jams, jerky, you know, that kind of stuff. Remember jerky's not shelf stable. It's not unless it's like this. Literally these are here because Phil puts them in the overhead compartment of his truck. So another part of having an essential pantry, number 17, right, is prepare for food preservation or cooking alternatives. We've talked about the fondue pot. Everyone's on the hunt for a fondue pot again, right? Go to your local thrift store, buy a new one. Doesn't matter. Get a fondue pot. Super easy. There are all different kinds of ways to heat stuff up. Uh, we've talked about a whole bunch of them. And when it comes to preserving your food, how are you going to do that? Tell me. Throw it in the comment section down below. Number 18, plan on growing your own food. If you have never grown anything before, don't spend hundreds of dollars on seed because you don't know what you're doing. I have been growing for quite some time and still don't know what I'm doing. I'm not a gardener. Never take gardening advice from me, okay? But it's not a matter of just throwing it in the dirt and walking away. That's not how you grow stuff. It takes a bit. And there are failures. There's a lot of failures. What was your garden failure this year? Whoo, yeah, it was an interesting year, wasn't it? But plan for growing some of your own food. If Sven on the fourth floor in Norway can grow tomatoes and peppers in his window, so can you, my friend. 
So number 19 is to keep some cash on hand for last minute supplies. It's going to happen. A little bit of cash someplace, it's going to happen. It really, really is. Number 20, you want to stay informed. Huh, right. Stay informed on local food supply and potential shortages. I'm going to tell you to be very cautious about where you get your news for this because I have run across some places where I'm like, where are you hearing this? I mean, it, tru it truly is the epitome of fear mongering. None of it is factual. None of it. Um, so pay attention to where you're getting your, your information from because most of the time it's not, oh my God, Walmart's out of food again. No, they're not. Okay. They were uh, resetting the store or it was the day the shipment was due or, what you know, come on already. Life's not hard enough, right? So keep an eye on your local news, your grocery store inventories, and your supply chain alerts to adjust your plans as needed. Again, be cautious where you're getting that information. Sometimes it's just an overall look that, hey, we could be having problems here. I mean, they said for, what, a couple of years now that we could have some serious problems where we were looking at um, grains, grains, wheat. And uh, I read a report recently that said, take a deep breath. We're doing okay. Okay, cool. Nice. So, you know, it's not always the way that they say it's going to be, but better safe than sorry. These steps are here basically to help you establish a strong and adaptable foundation on food security, ensuring that you're prepared for a variety of emergency scenarios because you never know what's coming down the pike. You really don't. And again, if you've ever been food insecure, you know, down below in the links down below, I have uh, a direct download for this list to add to your binder. Yes so that you can kind of wing through them and check them off as you get them set. It's a direct download. It will download, when you click on it, directly to the device that you are on, wherever your device is set up to have it download to. That is all I can tell you, okay? I hope that helps. If not, feel free to listen to the video 40, 50, 100 times to write it all down. That works for me too. Check out this video right here to tell you about 24 Forever Foods. Forever. Just like how much I love you guys. Until next time, stack it to the rafters, be safe.